Mother Nature and I were at odds these past few weeks. I got poison ivy. The rash spread across my entire body, causing swelling around my elbows and knees and an intense burning sensation that would not give me any relief. I had been using most of my natural remedies, such as witch hazel and a jewelweed salve and even acupuncture, but the rash got even worse, so I ended up having to go to the doctor. While recovering from this, I haven't been able to do some of the simple things that I never quite realized I'd miss doing so much, such as sleeping on my side, doing yoga, taking my daily walks, and spending time in my garden. The sun and heat aggravated it more, so I had to stay cool indoors. This has been really hard for me because I felt like I had waited months throughout winter and spring to prepare plan, and get this garden ready for an even bigger growing season, and now I can't even tend to it. Watching the garden grow wild has been interesting, though. Watching it grow untamed, untouched by human hands, it's taken on a different energy of its own, now that it has the complete freedom to just be. Some of the things I had planted has already begun to reach its full cycle, flowered and gone to seed, and I'm just letting it. I've been saving some of the seeds so that I can use them again next season. The bees love the flowers and there's something special about letting the plants run its full cycle and watching how much it transforms the garden. Letting nature do its thing. Strange came by night, found a way out of sight. to prepare through the fields pulled away what was
Since I got poison ivy and have been letting the plants just grow wild in my garden, I discovered that jewelweed is growing near the long edge of my garden on the other side of the woods. In the past, I probably would have cut back some of these unwanted weeds or pulled them out from the root, but it just goes to show you that you never know what nature can provide and why. It's almost as though Mother Earth herself knew that I would need this amazing plant right now. It is the plant for treating and preventing the spread of poison ivy. The juice in the stems and leaves of the plant counteracts the usherol oil in poison ivy, poison sumac, or poison oak. We had been having some issues with moles in the garden. The moles are really good at aerating the soil, which for me is a great thing with all the clay soil we have around here. But the moles have been a bit destructive and completely uprooted some of my plants and seedlings. They also eat earthworms, another natural aerator of soil that I definitely want to keep in my garden. I did some research to find out what would help deter them in the most humane way possible. I purchased a couple of mole windmills from Layman's. Each one covers up to 20,000 square feet, about 75 feet in every direction. And they do very well in clay soil because the vibration travels much further than in looser sandy soil. They mount on a grounding rod so that the vibration moves deep within the earth which the moles do not like. I put one in the garden and another behind the house. They seem to be working very well, so I purchased a few more. Well, I got an old dog and I call him Green. He's the sickest looking nurture that you've ever seen. Now my old dog, he can't do a darn thing When I shout to him, fetch, he refuses to bring He's got a skin complaint, he's a real smelly mutt He's grown a streak of anger and he bit me in the butt He's gone barking mad, he's following his tail Once he could have caught it But now he's gonna fail Can't take him for a walk or take him for a run My old dog Green, he ain't a lot of fun He scratches all day when he's chewing on his ball And he loves to butthole surf on the carpet in the hall He got a skin complaint, he's a real smelly mutt He's grown a streak of anger and he bit me in the butt He's gone barking mad, he's following his tail Well, once he could have caught it But now he's gonna fail Now, Rancid Old Green, he's taking to his 
bed He hadn't scratched for days, I think he must be dead Now my old dog's all skin and bone And the flies they are a-coming for to carry him home He's got a skin complaint, he's a real smelly mutt He's thrown a streak of anger and he bit me in the butt Gone barking mad, he's following his tail An old dog and his name is Green And if you call back tomorrow he won't be seen If you call back tomorrow he won't be seen If you call back tomorrow he won't be seen Goodbye old dog We had a few days of heavy rainstorms. In the past, we've had issues with flooding on our land and around our greenhouse. Earlier this spring, we had excavation work done to widen the creek and improve the water flowing through that area. This helped quite a bit, but it was really put to test this week when we had the heavy rainstorms. The greenhouse was underwater again, and part of our driveway had washed away, again. Last year, we lost part of our driveway and had to rake much of that gravel back onto our drive and even had to pay someone to come level it out, top dressing it with more gravel. Now, we face that yet again. I think if we widen and straighten out the ditch that leads to the storm drain, which carries all the water from across the street, then perhaps that will help reduce the impact heavy rain has on this area and hopefully keep this from happening again. As the season transitions to summer, I can feel the energy begin to change. This is a time of year when there is more light on this part of the planet, when the sun feels so close that we can practically touch it. We can feel it on every part of our body and watch as the plants spring to life, reaching high in hopes of touching it as well. It's a celebration of life and light. May we all harness that energy in our day-to-day lives, sending more light into the world.